Welcome back. This is the second part of the Friday Briefing. Now, dealing with teenagers is no easy feat. For parents, dealing with teenagers bored at home in the midst of a global pandemic is a matter of a textbook study. That has been a challenge that parents have had to contend with since COVID-19 hit Kenya in March, resulting in the closure of schools countrywide. Recent reports about teenage sex parties and drug abuse have shocked many and raised even more concerns among parents and guardians about the safety and security of their children. But how easy is it to raise teenagers in such unprecedented times? Well, KTN's Timothy Otieno attempts to answer a question no parent seemingly has the answer to. The Gasheru family residence in Dagureti area is awash with memories of a tight-knit family where Steve and his wife Tibaga are raising not one but two teenagers at the same time. With 18-year-old Mimo in school, the couple often spends extra time with their 13-year-old son Mugisa. But the wave that has of late been sweeping the country with teens engaging in unruly behavior has not been a cause for concern in this household. What we did as a family is we were very deliberate that we can't control what's out there. What we can do is create an environment that allows them to become uh, responsible uh, wherever they are. So what we've done is we create a value system around who we are as a family and what we normally tell them is we are the Gasheros. So the name in itself is an acronym for the values we stand for. The couple's secret to this unwavering confidence in their children is what they term as the ability to relate with the teenagers more as friends rather than offsprings. There are two words. Okay. There's friends and being buddies. Parents will remain as friends because a friend means I still remain, I still maintain my authority and I can be a voice of reason and you, you listen. When we are buddies, I've come down to your level and at that place then the lines are very blurred. So when I give an instruction, just a general check out the child will get confused too. Is this mom, is mom being serious or is she just being in a, in a joking mood? Happy to see you too. But online child safety expert Evelyn Cassina says striking a chord of mutual trust between parents and their children is not such an easy task, especially in an age where social media is a key influencer of how teens act, think and behave. And when you find your child is unfortunately always behind a screen, that's a red flag. Um, I have had parents who are just complaining my child has become a zombie. When they wake up, the minute they wake up to the time they go to sleep, even extended time, they are on their screen, literally. That is a red flag. When your child is not meeting certain milestones, they're not sleeping, they are not um, getting out of their phone, literally. They start changing their demeanor. They want to dress a certain way. They want to talk a certain way. Uh, their vocabulary changes, those are red flags. At the Gasheru home, internet access to their teenage son has been replaced by house chores, including gardening. Today, Mugisa joins his mother in planting onions in their small kitchen garden in the family compound. It's an activity done as part of a bonding session between the two. I don't enjoy most of it, but I'm okay with it, yeah. Like feeding the chickens, I have to wake up early in the morning, but I don't, but because I still wake up at 10 to feed them. And then it's like 10 minutes long, then I have to come and do some weeding, which I do for like 30 minutes, an hour. Then I go and do my studies. Yeah. I believe the challenge for most parents is not necessarily the teenage years, is what you did in the first 10 to 12 years. So uh, we were lucky to have been engaged in a parenting, uh, let me call it class, uh, when our daughter was uh, just about a year and a half. And with that, it helped us sit down as a family and come up with uh, w the values we want to raise our children with. But teen sex parties and binge drinking has been on the rise since schools were closed earlier in the year due to COVID-19. With more free time on their hands, Experts believe teenagers under extreme peer pressure are the most vulnerable. It's the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> uh, the chickens have come home to roost, literally. Um, why? Because uh, 
I believe that these things have been happening. It's just that maybe we have not been seeing them the way we are seeing them now. So, for example, our son Mugisa, he does, he makes the lunch. Then he'll do, he wash the lunch dishes, all the dishes from, from morning. Um, then Mima would do dinner. But for 13-year-old Mugisa, the chores are a blessing in disguise. The family garden is blooming. So he just learned to cope with it. And also I've been with my parents a lot. So it's not that bad. Mm. With dad ensuring Mugisa has no unmonitored access to the internet, this family believes openness, transparency, and engaging in more deliberate family time may be the key to raising the perfect teenager. Timothy Otieno, KTN News. Well, many thanks, Timothy Otieno. He's definitely painted a perspective, a clear picture for us. And we'll definitely delve deeper into this particular conversation because it's not just being a parent, it's also being a friend, mutual trust, talk of values, and being deliberate with spending time. A lot goes into parenting. I cannot summarize it. But earlier on, my co anchor Ashley Missouri, had a conversation with youth who have actually gone through this tough phase in life, using drugs, abusing, as well as partying, which they started at a fairly young age, one at 16 years, the other at 11 years. Let's listen in on their journey. In the past few weeks, we've witnessed cases of teenagers being arrested in various parts of the country because of underage drinking, underage sex, and also use of drugs. Now, we want to have that conversation. And joining me on set right now, I'm blessed to have two Josephs. We have Joseph Wambua, who is a prison officer, and also reaching out to those who have been affected. And across me, we have Joseph Kabochi, who is also known as Countryman. He is a jack of all trades, he's a pastor, he's a counselor, and equally reaches out to those who've been affected by drugs. Now, before we get to what exactly is the problem, what is the issue, maybe you could start by telling us your stories briefly. I'll start with you, countryman. Uh, okay, uh, for me, I was uh, 11 when my mother died, and I, was, I faced rejection uh, when I was 11 years of age by extended family. My grandmother said that I did not belong to them. Uh, since there were other people around me that uh, I thought that you know, they were role models by the way they were doing, so I focused on them and I would uh, even admire uh, their lifestyles. And I thought uh, smoking, and by smoking, you know, marijuana and, and cigarettes and by drinking, that looks so cool. So for me, I fall into that trap. And by the time, that was in class six, by the time I completed class eight, I was already an addict of uh, alcohol, marijuana and uh, cigarettes. So I didn't do well in my class 8 ACP exams, but still I wanted um, uh, to go on with school. At that time I was being sponsored uh, by um, a project, a church project. I still went to uh, high school, uh, but I didn't stop what I was doing. I continued uh, being chased uh, like two schools, but I, I managed to complete. Whereby I came back to where I used to live and I joined the gang, started partying and all such things ended up in streets <laughs> and lived up in streets for seven years. I've been uh, uh, someone who has been sleeping out in the, in the streets. Later, someone just took me. I, I became a gang, uh, a gangster, gang with criminal. Uh, later, um, in jail, and uh, another person just came in my life and just talked to me because uh, he saw someone who was troubled, who was looking for direction. And they helped me and uh, they took me to a rehabilitation program whereby I completed that program 10 years ago now. <laughs> I'm clean and now what I'm doing is to reach out uh, to gangsters in the streets. People are doing prostitutes, you know, prostitution, uh, especially young girls, young boys who are engaging what in age? drugs uh, from 14 to 17. Okay. In the same same age that you are, uh, you are talking, uh, uh, currently we are talking about. Okay, yours was a cry for help. You were yes. a troubled child. Yeah. yeah. Oh, what about you, Joseph? Was it the same case? My, my journey to alcohol, drugs, and substance abuse started way back in 1999. I was informed too. And it was an act of experimentation and curiosity. So I started drinking for fun, but uh, it progressed. It's a progressive disease. And come to one when I was informed for in Machako school, 
Because of the too much drinking, I was even suspended several times. And uh, it took me a while. But I thank God because when he did my form for he passed, got a B plus, and in two or three I joined JQ at Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology as a job student to do mechanical engineering. However, because of my drinking, while I was in second year, I was not able to attend classes. I was not able to do my practical as well. And eventually when we did the, each end, uh, the end of semester examinations, I had six supplementaries and uh, I was not in a position to continue with my education. I was discontinued. Mm -hmm. But that did not stop there. In 2006, I was employed in the Kenya Prison Service because I was discontinued in 2005. To six as employed in the Kenya Prison Service, posted to Nairobi West Prison, and uh, my drinking increased, leading to several disciplinary cases while I was in duty, drunk and disorderly. Okay, going to work while you, while you are drunk, absenteeism, absconding of duties, neglect of duties. And uh, I married in 207, and uh, it also didn't work because, because of my drinking. We were blessed with two children, and in 2011 I was transferred to Embu because of the same disciplinary issues, because I was not able to perform my duties well. And in 2014, when the worst goes to the worst, when I hit rock bottom, I joined a rehab center, a Sumbi treatment center in Karen, did my three months program, and I was able to go back to my sobriety. Okay, my first marriage didn't work, so in 2015 also married again while well, I was in Machakos prison. And was able to stay sober for four good years. However, come 2018, I relapsed again. But this time I didn't go back to alcohol. This time I was addicted to alcohol, to, to bang and mugoka. Mm. And uh, it took me less than four months to hit rock bottom again. And uh, all was lost. I sold everything in the house. And even it was easy for me to sell my wife's phone because, but it was arm in arms with it, so it would not be in a position even to sell it. But come December 9th, 2019, I then enrolled for another rehab program, this time at the retreat center Limuru. And uh, I believe this time it worked because I stayed for 90 days there, and uh, I finished on March 7th this year. And. Uh, to help me to remain sober, yeah. I've been reaching out to my fellow addicts, to my fellow officers who have a problem with the same, and trying to sensitize on the same, because I've come to realize it's a give and take, whereby if I try to help another addict to get sober, I also remain sober. However, it's also been a journey, mm -hmm. but I thank God for all of that, and I'm now continuing with my sobriety. All right, so these are two different journeys two different reasons. One was experiment, one was a cry for help. Countryman, you work with so many young people who are on the same path. Yeah. What do they say is the reason? Is it just, you know, I want to try it out and I end up being, do, you know, being something that I like and I keep on doing it and doing it, or it's other reasons? There are so many reasons uh, why people get into drinking and, and using substance abuse. And of course, I think uh, one is how we model our lifestyles are parents. Uh, if we tell, if we, we, we tell our kids, you know, stop um, associating with that friend, stop doing that habit, what are we actually doing ourselves? So it starts with us. Others, it's because of curiosity. They want to start that thing because there are no, uh, you know, guidance and, and proper way of uh, knowing what is right and what is wrong. So the parents have no time for their children. They don't yes. know what the children are doing. True. But, you know, Joseph, you're a parent of a teenager, actually, 12 years. Not, not yet teen, but, you know, they're heading there. This abuse or, you know, the start of indulging can start at a very early age. For you, knowing that you've gone through that process and you're seeing your child at that age where they'll start experimenting, how is it for you? To me, it's a, it's a challenge. But, you know, words are life. Mm. Words are life. And uh, as I look at my 12-year-old son, and even my 8-year-old daughter, I normally try to tell them the truth. Yeah. I normally try to use myself as an example. 
I normally tell them, look at how Halko has done to me. Look at how Bang has done to me. Look at how Mugoka has done to me. Because it's, it, it's a high time for us. Because most of us parents, the foundation was wrong as we brought up these children. Because children normally try to imitate what the parents are doing. And leave alone you as a parent. I may not be drinking, but the people around me might be drinking. So whenever you even go for a function, mm -hmm. they see people drinking, they'll believe that and this is the right time. thing to be done. Okay, you might tell them, don't drink. So they might even come to an, ex an extension of thinking that there will be a, a time for me to come when I will be drinking. And that is the dangerous part that we parents are doing. Yes. We should set an example. Secondly, yes. I was thinking, sensitization on the same to our children. Tell the children from primary school, secondary school, that they t this thing is wrong. In fact, it, can, it should even reach a point where in the 844 system, in the curriculum, they should include the same about alcohol, drugs, and substance abuse. All uh, right, but you know, uh, there's this thing about teenagers, and we've all been there. When you, your parent tells you something, you believe no. No, they just don't want me to be having fun. They don't want me to be happy. They don't want me to try this thing. Because there's also that rebellion. So then these kids, where they are right now, at that stage where, you know, I want to try things on my own. I might, my parent may be telling me, don't do this, but I don't necessarily listen. So then how do we help such kids? Okay, uh, one thing I've come to learn that parents should actually be aware of uh, the culture that mm -hmm. is around. Even the identity crisis that they, the teenage uh, age has always been in crisis, you see, like they want to find themselves. Those are the things, because now you, if you don't know their language, you might not be able to help them. Right, let's talk about the issue of society, because yes. as much as we blame parents, I remember when I was a teen, being seen outside the house, my parents would be called. You know, I've seen Totowako hapa, hapa, na hapa. Are we giving our children too much freedom? Yeah, I'm thinking it from a different perspective. Mm. Because parenting is all round. And that's where the society is coming in. You see my child smoking bang, and then you keep quiet. Which role do you take? You see my child drinking, you keep quiet. Maybe you even go to an extent, you're drinking with my child. Mm. Because Look at the life we're living currently. You'll find a 50-year-old gentleman drinking with an 18-year-old girl. Sponsor, quote unquote. Sponsor. Yes. See? So at the end of it all, the society has, really, has lost its objectives. Why? Because this 50-year-old should be guiding this 18-year-old on how to make up on his life. Mm. But you see, as, as the society has really its objective, we lose it all. The but, foundation has already been lost. But isn't that the fault of social media? Because the whole sponsor thing, aspect of sponsors, you know, it's being blown out of proportion by social media. An adult is an adult. Okay. Who is mature more than that kid. Like the way I said, these kids are not equipped to raise themselves. Mm. And if parents don't raise them, somebody else will do it. You see, nowadays we see wealth without work. So these kids actually emulate the bad role models in, in, in the community. You see community nowadays, you see, like they are sacrificing the ethics for a certain place. So, Some so, weird as, things, yeah. as we wind up, you yeah. know, we know the problem is one, society. Problem is parenting. What is the way forward? Because these children are already there. You know, they've already experienced it. Chances of them wanting to experience more, as you had mentioned earlier, like you want to experience a better high. It's very high, you know, like the, the chances of them experiencing it, again, very high. How do we stop it now, done, once and for all? Both of you briefly, I'll start with you, Joseph. First of all, I think the society should take the role of parenting. Parenting should not be left behind closed doors. Ukingia kwa nyumba, na baba na mama. The society should play an overall role. Secondly, sensitization on the same yeah. to the children, even at an early age, whereby I was saying this thing should even be introduced, even in primary school, yes. about alcohol, drugs, and substance abuse. You know, when you introduce it at an earlier age, you know, when they start learning it in class, 
thermal graphs, something. Why is it? What is this alcohol? What is this drug? You see? But at the end of the day, when you come and try to deal with it, when they started using, it will be more of a challenge. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, but you know, there's the issue of technology also. It plays a big role. So then how do you cap that? You, you have to know what your kid is doing. Mm -hmm. You have to know the channels, the TV program that these are the favorite ones. And as a parent, you have to monitor. How Those... and they don't have time? None of that is another problem. You see, I like the way I said earlier, you know, parenting does not come by accident. A good kid will not be raised by chance. It has to be intentional parenting. You have to be committed to knowing what is your, where your kid is. For example, those people that were found, the kids, they were found uh, with other friends. <laughs> so what kind of friends that you parent, you, don't, you actually don't have no, you, you have no idea who are your kids' friends. The and peers that they going. yes, and they tell you I'm going somewhere. What what does that person do? Yeah. What well, you know, if you don't train these kids, eh, you know they'll end up being empty, and anyone can mislead them. So we have to be intentional. We have to take time. You know, it's all our responsibility. We brought those kids there, so we have to play part. Community also is a challenge. Community, like, let's go back to the parents, the discipline, you know, part. Mm -hmm. There is no caning, you know. I don't support abuse, the physical abuse, but there is no discipline, rod. There's nothing, you know, that is not encouraged. So some of the things that we have failed as even community is now we don't actually take that uh, responsibility. Uh, like, your kid is not even, cannot be caned by a neighbor. Yes. You know, I cannot look. Even a teacher, a teacher let alone a neighbor, yes. Yes, even you as a parent, even you as a parent, <laughs> it is illegal yeah. to do that. And then the role models that we actually display. We have good names that their characters are questionable. We have musicians, even so-called gospel musicians. So we sell the gift, but not the character. We actually even call people for interviews, and give them approval and favor, like we give they, they, they have, role models for success yes but their car you know the character is wanting you see character is who they are in private the reputation yes. is who they are in public you okay see what i'm saying yes uh, i guess that's a very good place to end because <laughs> at some extent you've even blamed the media <laughs> but thank you very much for making time to have this conversation on the friday briefing to my immediate left that is joseph from Boer prison officer and also someone who guides those who have been affected with alcohol drugs and so on and of course across countrymen oh it's aka countryman mm. but it's joseph kabochi who is jack of all traits pastor counselor and equally guides those who have lost thank you very much gentlemen for making time well an informative discussion right there with my co-host ashley missouri she got to engage the two josephs who have in one way or the other gone through this trying time and overcame it though they have different stories as such we just want to engage jane gatia who's joining us uh, she's a counseling psychologist and would like to actually add up on what has just been mentioned thank you so much for your time welcome to the friday briefing i'd like to start with your quick reaction over the years working with young adults is this the same kind of narrative we hear especially on those who have been affected with this scourge that is actually in the limelight right now Jane Gatia, I believe you can hear me. Good evening. Good evening. I hope you're well. So I'd like to start with your, with your quick reaction. That is, we've just read two stories, one by our reporter, Timothy Otieno, that actually showed the, the, the importance of instilling deliberate timing, the mutual trust. But on the other side, we've had two gentlemen who have actually gone through the troubles of fighting addiction which they started at a very young age i'd like to start with your reaction briefly uh, thank you very much i love i love i love that discussion as it was going on and i would like to say that uh, it is very important that we are able to parent our children 
What has gone on there is a good example of what we need to do to help our children, starting with the issue of parenting. It is true that the parent has a very critical role to play in the life of every growing up child. The reason why I will be called a parent, for instance, is because I have special responsibilities to make sure that I nurture that child, that I give the basic you know, requirements to that child up to the time they can be able to fetch for themselves. And this includes the standards of living, the morals, the integrity, the assertiveness. We always say that home is the first school of every child. And maybe something we need to remember is that every child was, will be a parent at some point. And every parent was a child. So it is very important that we see this child through the mirror of that adult that we want to have. Talk of 15 years later, 20 years later, 30 years later. All right. But let's go back to who is responsible. When a child goes into drugs abuse, for instance, uh, as was the discussion earlier on, we know that there has to be someone who takes care of this child and that person has need to know what's going on with the child, that's the parent. So that when the child goes, comes back home, assuming this child lives with his or her parents, it is the responsibility of the parent to know what is changing what has this child come in with? And when we talk of a child, we're actually talking about this person who is all the way up to 16, 17, sometimes even 18 years right. of age. That is one responsibility. Because a child who is in misconduct or something that is not welcome in society, there will always be behavioral indicators. Okay. But, then but we come to the society. So the society entirely is responsible for what happened to our children. And there's this popular saying that the child belongs to the society. And true to the word, this child will grow up with their misconduct, with their abuse, you know, habits, addictions and all that, and they'll go to the wider society. Whom do they fight? They'll fight the very society that provided drugs to this child. They'll fight the same society that you condemn the child, yet they didn't correct this person. A teenager who is in school has other members of the society, the teachers right. and others in that community. They too have a responsibility to ensure that this growing up person belongs to the society and someday they'll be doing what the adults today are doing. And the child ultimately must be able to follow the guidelines. The family values are very important. It is the wish of every family, every parent, to see that they bring up a child who is responsible, who respects others, who does not get into addictions. So we have a three-tire uh, maybe dimension here, and all of them are equally responsible. But let's say that the parent takes the bigger junk of responsibility, because they are the ones who brought the child into the world, and this child must grow up, and this child has to be introduced to the society. So what kind of, child, or of a child does the parent introduce to the society? When the child gets to the society, how do we receive the child ultimately? What do we give that child? When we talk about drugs abuse, where are these drugs found? Who is providing the drugs, for instance? 
it must be part of the society that it ruins the child. So in my opinion, and from my professional dimension or studying, I still believe that we have all of them, the child, the wider community, and the parents to help the child to come up. Because tomorrow, we will need that child to serve in the capacity of an adult. All right. Now, it definitely is a collective responsibility. And even by the way we've actually asked the audience back at home, specifically who is to blame, just as you've mentioned, Ngatia, it is the society, the parents. That's what most of our viewers are saying. But we have to respect the fact that these are different times. It's not easy for the society to actually um, zone in on a child who is misbehaving, especially with parents who are very adamant and protective with their child. But even with the changing times, I mean, it's also quite um, evident that parents at times are prescribed to the school of thought, do as I say, not as I do. I will tell my child not to drink alcohol, but due to the curfew or perhaps what is going on right now, I'll be drinking at home. So the child is definitely at a crossroad. How do we work towards a solution, considering the fact that this is a different time and age? The exposure with social media as well also plays a part. What's the solution? Thank you. Well said there. And I think what we need to do is to get the parents to be the role models that need to be. Can we get parents spend quality time with their children? The idea of I'm busy, I'm looking for money. Yes, money is good, the child needs it. But can we be the first teachers? Can we be the first role models? Because this child will learn by observing. They will learn by imitation. And that's how ideally we learn things, because we have seen people do them. And particularly our parents, because our parents are the heroes. They are the giants. And we want to do what they do because it must be good, seemingly, since the parent is the one supposed to give direction. So I suggest we must pick yeah. the ball where we dropped it. I have to ask, what of a case where the child is rebellious? They've already crossed that particular bridge. In the case of this roughly 190 teens, pupils who are actually caught engaging, they've already tasted the forbidden fruit. How do we work towards uh, negating the negative effects of the exposure to drugs, to that sort of life, that even Ashley mentioned that once you want, you'll want a better high, right? Wow, well, that's a very good question. But I would like to say that it's never too late. It is never late to make a correction of a wrong. And what I believe, because someone said that all behavior is learned. And all behavior can be unlearned and ultimately can be relearned. So we need to teach the child or this young person to unlearn the behavior that they have already learned. And they can be given a second chance. And once they are given that chance, then they are told what they need to amend. Obviously, some things may be difficult to reverse. L let's take, for example, a girl who got pregnant. We cannot undo that. But we can teach the girl to take their time and stop there. And make sure they don't make the same mistake next time. 
Yeah, that's my take. Okay, many thanks. And I mean, we definitely appreciate your input right here. Jane Gatia, who's a counseling psychologist, definitely has a lot of experience working with the young pupils, the teenagers in society. And we definitely hope we continue engaging on this particular issue that seems to become a vice in the society, especially when it touches on the young ones who need direction, not just from the parents, clearly, but from the society as well. It's a collective responsibility. Many thanks for your time, Jane Gatia, right there. So they usually say you save the best.